Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today we are going to make this pineapple block. I'm going to show you how to make this pineapple block using no foundation paper piecing and no specialty rulers. We're just going to need our regular rotary cutter and ruler and a bunch of scraps. When making these pineapple blocks, you can make them any size you want and you can use any size strips. Now for this one, I use the two inch strips for all of them and all of these I use an inch and a half. And I just wanted you to see the difference between using a dark background and a light background, using narrower strips and using wider strips. This is a truly scrappy project. You do not have to have the same fabric for your background. And as you can see, I have plenty of scrappy fabrics going through here. I have a variety of whites and even my blacks are not all the same. Some of them are a little bit gray and lighter and some of them are a nice dark rich black. I'm showing you this tutorial this morning and this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern on May 6th. We are going to be making these during the live stream. As I mentioned, you can use any width strips you'd like. Just as you're doing each round, that round needs to be the same width. So if you really want to use up a whole bunch of your scraps, you can cut a whole bunch of strips and cut them anywhere from an inch and a quarter up to two inches. Or if you want to use a jelly roll, you can cut them at two and a half inches. So dig into your scrap bins and come on and do a little stitching with me. When working on a block like this, something that has a lot of pieces and that's going to take me a little bit of time to make just one block, I like to make a couple test blocks. I actually like to test block any quilt block I'm making for the first time or one I haven't made in a while. And that just gives me an idea and refreshes my memory if I've made it before and how the block goes together, where the pieces go, and maybe if I can do a shortcut or trim some pieces to different lengths. I made this one starting with black in the center. The black is the background and sometimes depending on how you look at it, you might see the colors popping or you might see the black background just pop up a little bit. I use two and a half inch strips for this one and I thought since I'm going to be making another one with you guys that I would go ahead and do white as my background and still stick with the fun colorful novelty fabrics as my strips that are going to be radiating out like that. I am starting with a two and a half inch square. I have a white one that's cut, inch and a half width of my strips, just to see how it's going to look differently versus the two inch ones. Starting with a two and a half inch square for my center, and I'm going to put triangles on either side. I cut a second two and a half inch square that I'm going to cut in half on the diagonal and I will sew those on either side. So I'm going to use a quarter inch seam with a 2.0 stitch length. For me, I'm going to use a silver thread. It's a, basically a gray and it's just a nice neutral thread that isn't going to show up. When I worked on my black blocks, I used a black thread because I didn't want to have like a white or a gray popping up just in case something happens. There is my block. I have these little dog ears off the side. All I need to do is line my ruler up with the side of that original white block and then I can just trim those off. You can trim them off with scissors. Our next piece is going to be on here and we're going to go ahead and do a two triangle thing again. For the next one, we need to make sure that our triangle bit here and that long part is going to go from this edge to this edge. So we're going to go a little bit bigger than the two and a half, so two and three quarters, three inches, three and a half, whatever you happen to have. So I have a square that is three inches. This three inches is probably gonna be just a little bit bigger than I need, but I'd rather have something that's a little bit larger than something that's a little too small. And the way to find out is after you cut your square, you'll be able to tell by just putting it up here. So if this flat part goes past it, you can just take something that's uncut. This one is a four inch square, so it's definitely going to be too large. But if I just fold it on half like that, as if I were to cut it, and when I lay it on there, I can see you know, how much longer it's going to be. Place those two and do those two seams. And there is my next piece. Now I need to trim this up so that it's an actual square. I'm going to put my ruler down and use this part of the triangle there as my tool to square it up. 
And when you look at it, you'll notice that your 45 degree line is gonna go straight from corner to corner, and that's gonna help you to keep everything nice and square. Then we'll just turn it around and do the other edges. Now, if you didn't wanna mess with the triangles, you could put strips on and just put strips around all four parts of your square. So you would lay a strip on one side and then the opposite, trim it up and do the same thing on either side that way. I did that with the center on my black version and you can't tell that that was a strip versus a square cut on a diagonal in half. I have my square put on point and now I'm going to go ahead and start adding my strips. Since I'm using white as my main color, I wanna make sure when I'm putting my novelty rows on that they read more of a color and not of a predominantly white because I wanna have that high contrast. But I don't have to worry about that yet. I've gone from a background or a white fabric to my contrast or novelty. So my next round will be the white fabrics again. So we're gonna do every other, depending on what you're at, you're gonna have your, your background and then your contrast and just keep going around. Since I rated my scrap bins for this project, I just pulled out some that are a little bit shorter and then I have some that are longer strips. Of course, as our block gets bigger, we're gonna need longer strips, but I don't want to use them early on when I can just go ahead and use some of my scraps. So when I lay my scraps down, I just wanna make sure that they are at least a quarter inch longer on either side. It's helpful if they're about a half inch longer. So for my little piece here, it's a three and a half inch square. So I'd like to have a piece that's around four to four and a half inches. That strip happens to be five. Now, if I had longer strips, maybe I'm working with a jelly roll or a honey bun, I would lay my strips down like this, give myself a little room on either side, and then just cut it with my rotary cutter. But I have plenty of scraps to keep working with. So I will sew this one on this side and that one on that side. So there are my two pieces sewn on. I went ahead and I trimmed them off, got rid of any excess. I lined my ruler up. I put any mark you want. This one just happens to be a six inch. I lined it up with my seam there and I trimmed off the excess. And that just helps me to keep my block nice and square as I'm going. And square as in the sense that it's not wonky because it is a rectangle. Then I'll find my next two fabrics to put on the side making sure that they are longer than the edge that I'm sewing it to. I'm using a variety of white fabrics and scrappy whites. I don't even mind if it has a little bit of a gray in it. And then my novelty fabrics are all nice, fun, bright colors. And that's just gonna give me a nice, good contrast. I just wanna make sure that as I'm going that I don't have any of my contrast fabric has a lot of white in it or something because I wanna have that nice, good pop. If you're working with scraps like I am, just be careful when you're pressing and such because there's a good chance you're gonna be working with some bias and you don't wanna get it all twisted and out of shape and stretched. I'm going to trim these four corners. So I'm gonna turn it this way and I wanna leave a quarter of an inch. I wanna trim a quarter of an inch away from that last strip. So I have my 45 in the center, so it's going down the diagonal part of the square. I can move this up and down until that quarter inch mark brings me right to that corner where the blue meets the white. And that's just going to help keep the square square. So even though we're kind of exploding out and we're making this interesting block, it, we still want it to be nice and square when we put it into our quilt. Now, if you're a chrome quilter or if you're working on some of those smaller type projects or you like to save your scraps for dog beds, etc., you might want to save that bit there. For me, I'm just going to throw that away because I'm already using scraps from a previous project that I don't mind tossing out that little bit. Because I kept my strips not super long, my scraps are gonna be limited. And as we get further out, you'll notice that you're going to be able to choose the length of your 
logs or rounds as you go around and you won't have as much waste as you do in the early rounds. And there is what we have so far. I know it looks kind of weird because we're so used to seeing squares in our quilting and we have this strange thing that's cut off, but that's exactly the way you want it to look. Our next round for me will be the novelty fabrics. I can lay these out, make sure that mine are going to be long enough. Then I will take these to the sewing machine and I will sew these. I like to do opposite sides and then press them and then do the other ones and then press them. Now, if I wanted to, I could have trimmed these little bits of strips a little bit shorter just so that they had just a smidge, or like I said, about a half inch on each side. In the beginning rounds, it doesn't bother me too much. As I get moving out and lead to more of the outer edges of it, as I'm using longer strips, then I'll start trimming it. I didn't want to take those extra steps to trim something when I'm just going to bring it over here to the table and trim it again. As I stitch these, I like to put my new strip down on the bed of my machine and I stitch from this side so that I can see I only had to stitch along the white area. When we're trimming these up, we are going to use our strips right there as our guide on where to trim them. So we will line it up. And if you notice, you use the quarter inch of your seam allowance. So I started with an inch and a half strips. So when I lay my ruler down, I'm going to be able to line it up at it's an inch and a quarter from this seam to that outer edge. So a quarter inch shorter, narrower than whatever your original strips were and trim this off. Now this is where sometimes you're gonna see that you have a lot of triangles that you're trimming off. And again, that's because I did not choose to trim my strips down before I put them on. If you're following a pattern, they might have the lengths that you need. If you're just going totally scrappy, as you're making your first test block like this, you can sit there and measure each of these so that you know that when you're on round one, two, three, that you need to cut a strip that is at least three and a half inches long. So if you make a little guideline and a little note for yourself, you can go ahead and pre-cut your strips so that when you're doing the next 63 blocks, 64 blocks or whatever for your quilt, you'll have a chart and it'll be a lot less scrap that you're going through. So if you're using yardage or if you're using fat quarters, then that might be really helpful. Or you can just cut long strips and go from there. Now the same thing with here, I can put my 45 through the center of this area right here on the diagonal, or I can just line it up and use that inch and a quarter for mine. So some of you are gonna think that is just way too much waste and others of you are gonna be a scrap sewer anyways and you understand that many times when you're sewing with scraps, you end up with this kind of waste. As you're going, if you think your square is getting a little off, you can always stop and just double check to make sure everything is working out really well. I have a five and a half inch line here. So I have a little bit of fabric sticking over that I could trim. Everything is good that way. When I'm looking at mine, I can see that this bit here is a little bit wider than that bit. So if I turn it around this way and I put that at the five and a half inch, and I can just trim off whatever little bit extra is there. And you can see that we're getting a little bit closer to being the same that way. So as you go and do each of your rounds, you always have that bit where you can stop and square it up, square it up every couple rounds, whatever works for you, or just square it up at the end. And for that little bit of a sliver, you might say, Robin, that's no big deal. If you're a regular quilter, but this is your first pineapple block, you'll understand that that little bit of a sliver that we trimmed off can really make a big difference in the overall look. And as you're going out, if you're just making one of these blocks for a hot pad and you're just trying it out to see how it feels and decide whether or not you want to make 64 of them for a large quilt, then you could just go ahead and leave that little sliver. I find that it's best to keep trimming as you go to make sure everything stays square if you want to have everything lined up precisely and to have that nice sharp look. It's totally up to you. 
So since I did that novelty round, now I'm going to go back to the whites. So these I can check and they are going to work okay there. These are about a quarter of an inch on either side, so I could sneak these in and use them just to get them out of my stash, or I could stick with something longer. And see, this is decisions like this is what's gonna show you how much extra waste you might have. Again, I'm gonna sew two sides and two sides, get them all on, press them out, and I'll show you again how to trim them As up. you see, as we're moving out, we're gonna start having more and more space here. So these strips, as you're getting larger, you're gonna have more of a cutout here. So your strips won't be overlapping at all, because sometimes in the early parts, there's a chance that they might overlap a little bit. So everybody gets trimmed the same. Even with the log, measure a quarter inch shorter from the width of your strips. So we're just going to cut them even with that strip of the previous round, or we're going to measure and or we're gonna measure a quarter inch narrower than the width of our strips from right there. Again, you can line it up and see if you're staying within the same size. And we're just gonna keep adding our rounds. As I first started making these, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, that's an awful lot of white because it's such a small block. Since it's only six and three quarter inches, it's a bit of a small block, so I'm not really seeing the design as it's going. I feel that the pineapple blocks are more stunning as a larger size. If you're going to make a smaller one, like this one is six and three quarters, six and a half, whatever you're working at, I would say that your strips need to be a bit narrower. That way you have more of an impact and you'll have more of these rows and rounds as such as you're going out and it'll give you more of that block. So now I'm starting to get into some of my longer strips. So I like to just lay it down and I have a little bit there, maybe just like a finger's width. I can use that as my general guideline and then I will just trim off the extra there, being careful I don't cut into my block. If you want, you can use the same fabric all the way around, but as I'm using scraps, I'm trying to use the fabrics just once in each block. So this one, I can just put it on. It is a bit longer, so to keep me from having to deal with too many scraps and too much to overlap as I'm sewing or to worry about, once again, I will just take this and trim off the extra. Of course, you can use scissors if you'd like. And this one's still large enough that it could be used if you're starting another of your squares. So instead of using the triangles there, you can go ahead and put a strip down and use that or use it for string blocks or crumb blocks or log cabins. I'm going to keep working on this as it gets larger and larger until I get it up towards a 12 and a half inch size. If I find anything interesting between now and then, I will stop and show it to you. Otherwise, I will show you how to finish off your block. So if you notice this one, this guy is nice and square and we're going to need to do the same thing with our white block. I added two more rounds and now you can really start to see that pineapple block look as it's coming out. I saved my two rounds of scraps so you do have a little bit of triangles. I did cut, as you see I'm on this round, I cut all of my little strips going around so that they're, as I said, about a half an inch larger so that I'm not using super long pieces and end up wasting much fabric. You can see the larger spaces now in between. So as we're going, trimming it up, you're still going to be laying it on there for me an inch and a quarter and laying it on that and trimming it all the way around. So I will do one more round of the white. But this time, instead of putting on the strips, I'm going to finish it off and I'm gonna put triangles on. So let me get this trimmed up. I have my square in the center and I'm orientating it so that it's a square and I'm not looking at it in the on point direction, which then tells me that on these corners, my next round of white will be triangles. 
if we look at my black block, you can see there it is. The square is square and not on point. And then I have these large sections over here that finish it off and turn it into a square. So we don't have those weird cutoff pieces. So I wanna take this over to the corner of my cutting mat and then I'll line it up so that I have my two edges sitting on the zero line and I'm going to look and see what size triangle I need for here. So I have one, two, three, four, four and about three quarters. So I need to cut a triangle that's four and three quarters. So if I bump it up to a square and I say that my square, if I add an inch to it and I cut a square that's about five and three quarters or even six inches just to give myself a wiggle room, then I'll be able to cut that in half diagonally and put one there and one there. So for this block at this size with these width strips, I'm going to go ahead and cut two squares that measure six inches. Now in my stash of scraps, I found these two triangles that were already cut. They are actually more like a seven inch square. I'm not even gonna worry about trimming them down. I'll trim them down in the project. So I will put one here and one there and I found this square this square is just about six and an eighth again I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to cut it on the diagonal put it there maybe I'll do opposites the only thing I was not going to do opposites is because I have that gray circle one there so that's why I went with it there I'll keep going and you can see how the block is forming now and how you're getting more of that, like it's coming out at you. I will stitch all of these down next. There are my triangles. Remember, since we cut a square on the diagonal, this seam right here is super biased. So you wanna be really careful you're not stretching that when you're sewing it and definitely when you're pressing it. So if I'm looking for a 12 and a half inch block, I can line up the square right here in the center so that I know I'd have a centered block or I can move it back and forth as I need if it's not perfectly squared just to make sure that I'm giving myself about a 12 and a half inch block and I'm evening it up so I have a little bit to trim off on each of the edges here and that way I know when my block is finished it'll be 12 and a half inches. Spin it around line it up on my two edges and there's my 12 and a half inch pineapple block using white as my background and brights you can see how it compares to the black so there is my 12 and a half inch my white background pineapple block and if i bring my black version in Kind of gives you an idea of the difference between the way they are. I see more of a an evenness here, and this one here with the way the white and the contrast is, it feels like it's almost stepping down and you're almost going into an optical illusion where this one seems more flat. But if we were to use the same background or a neutral so that instead of all whites, maybe you have creams and grays and just light colors, you can see where they're going to connect and then you'll have them going all the way out. So you'll have the same, or you can choose to do opposites. Because I started both of these blocks in the same way where I used my background fabric as my original square, they're all going to match up and it's going to give you that illusion when you're working on a entire quilt. If you're to use all the same, like all neutrals in here, if you use like the whites and the creams and the light grays and the pale yellows and stuff, your basic low volume neutrals you'll have this type of a look. Now my blacks, they do not match. They are all different shades of black because I purchased different brands of black fabric and such and black doesn't always seem to match. Even with my white fabric with the gray circles, you can see how that just settles down and it all looks about the same. Now what you can do if you don't wanna have this look, you can change that center block on every other one if you're going to be making, say you're making 24 of them, make them 
make 12 of one version and 12 of the other. So your other side, your B block, so to speak, can start with your novelty fabric in the center, and then you'll work your way out that way. And that will give you something a little bit different. They won't match up, but it'll give you a different type of look if you're not looking for that big illusion of a quilt. You can do them all that way, start them all with the novelty, each one, or start them all with your background. Totally up to you, but it's definitely a block that is worth trying and practicing first to see how it feels, to see if you want the narrower strips where you can see more of that individual look and how it's coming out, or the wider strips where you're only gonna have one, two, three, four of them, and here we have one, two, three, four, five. And just that one little extra round seemed to make a big difference. You can keep building these out and make them larger or stop where you're at. Depending on the width of your strips here is going to depend on whether you get a 12 and a half or a 14 and a quarter or a 16 and an eighth. It all depends on what it is. Now this is a great project to do as a chain piecing project to work on more than one block at a time. It'll make it go a lot quicker and you won't be getting up to go to your pressing station and your cutting board on and every time you do it. Just doing one round is going to take a while but you can do four or five I like to do either five or ten blocks at a time and then you can go ahead and come back over and do the pressing and cutting at that point I hope you're able to join me this afternoon for the live stream where I'm going to be working on a third block I think I'm going to stick with the smaller strips, but I'm going to start my center with my colored or novelty and build it out just so that you can see what that block would look like if I did it a little bit differently. So that's going to be May 6th at 3 p.m. Eastern, where we're doing what I'm calling a freeform block. Now, if you want to come back on May 20th, at 3 p.m. Eastern for the live stream. I'm going to be building that block using this Creative Grids Pineapple Trim Tool Ruler. And this is supposed to make it easier and it's supposed to allow us to keep our block nice and square. And it just tells you where to place everything and where to put your squares against the center. So your scrappy word for this week would be apple. It'd be too easy if I said pineapple because everyone would be using it for naming of the pineapple block. So we're just going to go with apple. We'll cut that in half and use that as our scrappy word this week. And I'd love to know if you have made the pineapple block before. Do you do it freeform, paper piece, or have you used the pineapple trim ruler? So again, I hope to see you this afternoon at 3 p.m. where I'm going to work on something like this. So I hope you have a great creative week and always create with scrappitude. Bye.